Greetings, welcome to another Fearless QA. Um, I'm here with uh, my dad, Bill Bogusky, filling in again as uh, our Ed McMahon, and Kimball Musk, who uh, is a um, pretty much a famous boulderite for, uh, for his serial entrepreneurial shit. God, it's a mouthful. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Kimball, uh, I'll just talk about you like you're not here for a little okay. bit, all right? Kimball's done a um, whole bunch of really neat things. He was an investor in uh, one of the earliest investors in PayPal. He is part of uh, one of the investors and on the board of SpaceX, correct? Um, pretty much uh, be, s took the time somehow to become a chef and then open his own restaurant in town, which is pretty much the best restaurant in town. Them, them and uh, um, what's the other one? Uh, Frosca. Frost is pretty good. They're great. We love those guys. Yeah, we love all those guys. But you know, one of the one of the the premier restaurants in town, which which is saying something because it's not an easy town to be the best restaurant. And um, and uh, what else did you do? You you oh, and you're the CEO. Actually, just stepped down as the CEO, and now the chairman of One Riot, mm -hmm. which is a real time uh, search engine. We can talk a little bit about that. Um, and. Uh, on the board of Colorado T Clean Tech and, and bringing clean tech to Colorado. And I don't think I mentioned uh, an investor in Tesla as and on, well. And on the board, yeah. And on the board of Tesla. So most people have probably heard of Tesla, the electric car. The car for really, for the new um, midlife ri life crisis, I think, right? <laughs> Where, great. right? Where you're like, you know, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? I really wanna do things to help the planet, but I need a hot car. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's what I think. That's what the Tesla is. A um, bunch of questions have come in, and uh, and we've been talking for a while, and we've known each other for a while. So um, if you've got questions, you can always tweet them in to to at fearless QA, and we'll uh, read read the good ones. Um, and if you see me start to struggle and I'm not asking the right things, send us the right questions because I'm you know I'm grasping. I'm doing the best I can. Um, so let's talk about. I think most of the questions that came in were about Tesla. So let's talk a little bit about Tesla. Sure. Um, Steve Haas, at Steve Haas, tweeted in the question about um, how do we create a future-driven business? Um, things like Tesla, right? Um, things like PayPal. And you've been part of a lot of, I, you know, what you could call future-driven businesses. Sure. How do you create those things? How do you identify those things? And, and uh, in a market that isn't really familiar, I think that's the that's that's the interesting part of the question is, people aren't ready for these things that you create, you know, or or they don't they don't ask for them. There isn't. Yeah, no, right? that's very true. I yeah. mean, most of the time people don't ask for. No one's the, the really big ideas. People are not not asking for. I mean, right. people didn't ask for Google. There were right. plenty of search engines around. Um, uh, you know, Tesla I think is really interesting because the we we just had a belief that it was physically possible. Right. And no one was doing it. Right. It wasn't like we, we thought, oh, there's this huge opportunity to go start a, a car company. That, that's right. the worst idea in the world. You know, it, it was more along the lines of this is possible and all the car companies are saying it's not possible. Mm. Let's go show them that it's possible originally with a relatively small budget. Uh, we had no idea what we were doing and, and found out that actually car, building car companies costs a lot of money. It's very expensive. It's very I expensive. Would imagine. And then, and then GM had um, done. What was it? What was the GM? Yeah, they did. The, car? That's the, that was one of the biggest uh, PR disasters for electric cars. They they created a car in the in nineties that um, was a terrible. All of the things that make an electric car bad. You know, very low range, uh, no power. All the things that make no sense because because uh, an electric car right. should have the most power of any car out there. Right. Uh, and range is just based on batteries, and they just chose a certain approach that made no sense at all. So we, we, we kind of came in with, a, with an attitude that, that actually an electric car is 
the highest performing car out there. Right. And so and we've gone for a ride together yeah. in a Tesla, and it's it's a wild feeling. It's unbelievable because you, normally you hear the engine noise. Obviously, of a, a, a high performance car, you hear a lot of engine noise. You don't hear much engine noise in a Tesla, and it allows you to feel. You, you sense other things. And what I remember is I could sense like the skin on my face like pulling as we go around corners and like pulling back when we yeah. accelerate, you know? Well, this is the thing. What people don't realize, we, we, the acceleration is 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds, which is supercar stats. Right. The problem though is if you were to drive you know, Porsche GT3 or one of the cars that are in a similar range, you have to be a professional driver to be able to change gears and actually get the car to perform. Right. With a Tesla, you just put your pedal, put the pedal down. Just this. And Can you it'll do literally this? shoot. It's like driving a rocket. Right. Right. It's a, the most amazing experience. So go for a test drive. If, even if you can't afford one, go for a test drive because it's such an experience that you will never get in any other car. It really is. I mean, it is t completely unique. And I've been in a lot of cars. I've been in a lot of fast cars. Yeah. But where, where do you go for a test drive? Right down the street here in Boulder, there's a there's a dealership. There's a dealership in, in LA, Alabama. Menlo Park, New York City, Chicago, Miami, Seattle, uh, and we're opening them all the time. Can you my have dad to dress go? like you could afford Can it? Can my dad go for a test drive? Just yeah, just I go in there, tell him Kimball sent you, and you'll get a test drive. Yeah, yeah. I want to have my cheeks <laughs> go back. It's a yeah, and your cheeks will be like by your knee ears probably. You know. Nice. I'm nice. sorry, but if you wear that black shirt, you'll get a test drive. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like he yeah, you can Yeah, you get one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. And um, so, so uh, that film, Who Killed the Electric Car? Great, yeah, great, great film. film. Yeah. Even as bad as that car was, people were begging. They were to begging keep for them, it. Yeah. Right. And they. Didn't There's so much it. passion around solving this this problem around petroleum and yeah. uh, the, the oil crisis and so forth. So there's there even despite the the inferior. I mean, I believe it's fairly inferior product. Uh, the community had so much support for it mm -hmm. uh, that you know it definitely told us that there was an opportunity there to go to go sell an electric car. And and uh, so, how much education though? When you go into something like this, and like you know, people aren't asking necessarily for electric car. They don't understand an electric car. Um, there's a lot of education that comes with that. I would think. You know, for us, it wasn't the education that was the problem. It was the price tag. Mm. Mm. You know, we really wanted to get the price down, and we just couldn't. I mean, yeah. the, the, the reason why we put it in a, in a sports car was because if you take a Ferrari, the engine in the Ferrari is a $50,000 engine. And so if you replace the Ferrari with an electric engine, you'll get the same performance, and you'll, it'll still be a $100,000 car, or in that case, higher. Yeah. What we did with the, with, with the Tesla is we basically created a sports car that had a sports experience, and you, 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 as you say, the midlife crisis kind of car. That really is a is a showy car. All the things that a hundred thousand dollar car should do, mm -hmm. and uh, because we just could not get the price down. Right, right. And so for us, it was much so more. So what of is a, the price now? It's one hundred nine. One hundred nine. Yeah, it's down a little bit then, right? One, well, no, it, it's it's always been around there. But the um, the most exciting thing for us is in. I remember summer. it was one hundred and ten when I first. Sure, we dropped it by, by one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just because you're a friend. Yeah. Right? yeah. What about for me? <laughs> <That's Yeah. right. laughs> Uh, so the big, most exciting thing is in summer of 2012, we'll come out with a sedan. Yeah. And that will be based on our platform, building the car from scratch, and we'll be able to get the price under 50. And if you incorporate the cost of the savings in gas, it's going to work out to be a, a real cost of about 35. That's crazy. I mean, unbelievable. That's what we're, that's it, what we sought the company to do. And that happens when? Summer of 2012. Okay. That's what I'm, I'm going to get. That one. Yeah, that's yeah. and and there's a huge waiting list, so get in line. It's a it's an amazing car to to to, to, buy, to buy. Yeah. So knowing you though, I can be second to last on the waiting <laughs> list, right? I mean, this is the kind of deals that we cut here, you know, because right. we've got that kind of leverage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, electric aside, the design of the car is so important, also, and it came out with a beautiful car. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. And was it designed uh, here or was it? It was designed by the Tesla team. Yeah. So in, in California, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great. Because so many times people run to Italy to have a car designed. Well, it was a collaboration. I mean, we did work with the Lotus guys as well. Oh, you did? Yeah, but okay. it was designed by the Tesla team working with Lotus because it was built in the Lotus factory. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, uh, if someone if someone really wants a deal and they're watching the show, it's 109. That's the deal that we're cutting. This show This only, show today. Yeah. Oh, today right. only. Today only. <laughs> Tweet in and we'll put your name on the list. That's right. 
The uh, actually, you know, and for for me, the next car is probably even more perfect for the new midlife crisis because you kind of want to bring your family along for yeah. the new midlife crisis, right? I think so. Well, I mean, people don't appreciate if you could if you can get a electric engine into a sedan, mm -hmm. you effect, you have like an M5 level performance for what will be about half the price. Yeah. I mean, it really is going to be a, an industry shaking. Uh, pro product is that car online right now? Can people see that? You can go see it online that? at tesalotus.com. And you can also see. I know in Palo Alto, right? There was the model, mm -hmm. the prototype, gorgeous, gorgeous, totally gorgeous. I mean, it is, it is, the shit. Can we say shit? Yes, we can. can Clearly, shit, yeah. 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 It's, it is, the, it is the shit. And, so, it, and it isn't done yet. I mean, the stuff that's coming out that we're building is is really amazing. I mean, it's so incredible. So one of the. Um, aspects of you and what you've done is, you know, you, you became an entrepreneur. I don't know if it was on purpose or whether it was, you know, uh, something that just happened. But then you've kind of, through investments and, and through through your own search, you've it's happened to you multiple times. And I think people look at that and they're probably curious, how does that happen? And where does it come from? You know, like, how do you decide, oh, this is what I'm going to do next? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, to me it's interesting. I think the doing what I'm gonna is really not how I think about it. It's more along the lines of you you come up with something you really are passionate about, and when you have some freedom, then you you start engaging and, and spending more time on it. You know? mm -hmm. So I've I've had uh, frankly not that many. I mean, Tesla wasn't my idea. You know, Tesla mm -hmm. was, was was someone else's idea. Um, the uh, I've had many many businesses that I've been part of that have been other people's ideas and they've, they've been. But you're an invest. I mean, even as an investor, and being early on in investment. Oh, you got to you got to be crazy to invest in yeah, the first round it's, of Tesla. I mean, you yeah. really it's, it was a crazy person's plan, you know. Yeah. So no, I mean, I was excited about it, but but uh, the the for my own stuff, what I like is I like finding stuff that I really am passionate about, mm -hmm. and just letting it happen you know it'll either it'll either turn into a business or it won't mm -hmm. or the business will, will adjust you know it's kind of like it's kind of like the show if you try and structure too much then mm -hmm. the show kind of comes out flat but if you right. just let your mind process what you want to go do and uh, just keep the vision in mind and let everything else sort of sort itself out then you you, you, see, you end up just doing stuff that you love but I think that's not necessarily easy for people there's so many things that you know people can be afraid of like you know what if it's not sensible? I guess that's part, you know, I've worked with so many kids that are going into business and there's a lot of pressure from their parents and their peers and cultural in, gen in general to say, this is a thing that can make money. This other thing, maybe not. Yeah. So, read your Well, I think this is my, well, I'm, I'm working on a, on a new business now and uh, it's my t probably my 10th time, for argument's sake. And it's more terrifying every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, really, that's yeah. interesting. Because you're stu you're stupid when you do it. You have no information when you do it the first time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, had, you you mentioned that starting a business is like, or being an entrepreneur is like. To, there was a yeah. So yeah, we, we use a phrase. So it's a it's a it's a terrible phrase for anyone who wants to get into entrepreneurship, but it's the truth. And what we call we say it's like chewing glass and looking into the abyss. It is a very hard existence. So don't do it unless you really really love what you do. Don't do it unless you love that glass sandwich. It's hard. Is there anything? Just jumping back to Tesla, a couple of questions were tweeted on, it tweeted in about um, what do you? Uh, is there anything you look at? A lot of people are, are branders. Is there anything about the Tesla brand that you would like to see it evolve to or done differently? I love the Tesla brand, and it actually came out of uh, uh, it, it. It kind of came out of the PR. Mm -hmm. right? It was almost interesting. We didn't. We didn't have a. Uh, I'm, I'm actually a big believer in brand, and and we didn't kind of control the brand as much as I would have liked. But in the end, it and and I'm sure everyone loves Tesla right now. Two years ago, people didn't love Tesla. It was it was a real roller coaster ride with 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 Tesla. Why did people not love Tesla? Well, I I, I think uh, we were so overhyped in the early mm. days, and I don't think it was our intention. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of happened that way. And when you get overhyped, then you kind of go through a cycle of yeah. disappointment. And the truth is, we were just we just kept doing what we were doing. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't think we were doing anything differently. But the the price kind of took us one way to the other. And in the end, we ended up with a brand that I think we're very proud of. You know, we we fought through the 
the sort of the hype and in the crash of the hype, and now we're a real company. And who's buying the car? Like, is there a profile? It's like, I, that, when, when I walk by, I'm always curious about who, there's usually somebody pulling out in one for a test drive. Sure. And it's yeah. radically different often than my expectation. I don't know what, what you're you know, saying. You know, it is interesting. I mean, a lot of people who would not buy sports cars are buying Tesla mm -hmm. uh, because it's an opportunity. A lot of people, uh, for, you know, for whatever reason, are embarrassed to go out and buy a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. But no one's embarrassed to go out and buy a Tesla. You know, right. you can drive around downtown Boulder or San Francisco or Miami and you'll feel cool and good, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with, uh, with a Tesla, with a, with a Ferrari or some really, you know, souped up car. It, there's a bit of an asshole factor that, that usually comes into that. Yeah. yeah so I think we douche, actually get actually... Douche is like douche. this word. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So we actually get a lot of people, I think, that, that uh, normally wouldn't have bought a sports car that are lining up. I, I see young women pulling out. Women awesome. love the car. Yeah. They, they love yeah. the car. We definitely have a lot yeah. more men buying than women, but uh, women love it. But I, but I would be willing to bet, and this is just, this is so anecdotal, that if you look at ownership of Ferrari, oh yeah, it's probably zero women. I would yeah, imagine. I mean it's low. You're indexing way higher. But there's one trouble. One problem. What is it? If you're at a stoplight, you can't rev it up. Yeah. <laughs> to can intimidate. you put it in neutral and like just go? <laughs> yeah, you, you can. Well, you, you can't get it up. You don't get that. <laughs> no. 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 But, but eventually, maybe you could buy uh, sound packages. <laughs> yeah. Right? And that has been the running joke of the, co of the company for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll ever work. I think probably the opposite is going to happen. The, the noisy car is going to go away. But uh, What about all the... F I remember there was fear about people who... Um, uh, blind folks not being able to hear electric cars coming and, and like putting whistles on them and stuff like that. Has any of that? No, that's, I think that's unfounded. I think that's just... It was weird. Uh, it's kind of like... A, a, Back in the day, you know, with uh, horses versus cars, and yeah. know, they would say, you know, car, the cars don't do this and don't do that. And you're like, well, we can put a clippity clop sound on the on the car, but <laughs> yeah, really, just to really, protect you really people. Need to do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some spokes, some some, some uh, cards in the spokes, maybe yeah, exactly. stuff like that. Um, so so uh, is it is the trajectory good for Tesla? Are you going to make it to the next car? I mean, I think yeah. that's one of the that's I mean, really was originally the. The big the, concern, yeah. Right? The, the whole idea was to start out with a with a with a high end sports car to just fund the development of the technology, mm -hmm. and then open a factory to do to do our own. And things are going great. You know, it's we just went public last month. It was or June, and very successful. And we have the funds and the support to go to go do it. And your sales, the way you handle sales, is a little different, isn't it? Right. Yeah, we don't have any dealerships. We have our own company owned stores. Mm -hmm. So we prefer the, the the model of Apple. You know, where you own your own stores, you own the customer experience, mm -hmm. and people come in, they get everything that's around the Tesla brand, you know, delivered by Tesla. Yeah, which is which is really cool. And also, mm -hmm. dealer laws are weird, right? Totally weird. Really weird. It's a, in fact, and, and, and something that really makes innovation difficult. Very. It's it's, if, it's a weird law, and I, and I don't know if I'm speaking exactly correctly here, but if we had one dealership in the country, we would have to shut down all of our own company stores. It's I like a, there's, right. a, there's a congressional yeah. law, yeah. in law, saying that if you have any dealerships, you're not allowed to have your own stores. Yeah, which is insane. Yeah. So, so we're just we just chose very early on not to do that. And and uh, one of the one of the potential uh, reasons why the electric car went away that was proposed in the movie, and you know, I've worked in automotive a bit and uh, and talked to uh, talked to folks, was that you don't do a lot of service on an electric car. I mean, that's the other beauty yeah. of owning an electric car is... That's three moving parts. Yeah, yeah. three moving parts. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the motor is basically, right. you know, three pieces. Yeah, and so what people don't realize is dealers make most of their money on service. Yeah. Yeah, the, the actual selling of the car is not the big Yeah, business. I mean, funny enough, we've actually decided uh, from in many parts of the country to not do service out of our stores. We just, we just drive someone to your house and just fix it right there because right. it happens so seldomly right we don't need right. you to come into the store we'll just drive we'll just someone come out and do it at your at your office or home and some in some cases are you flying to people's homes because it's, uh, you know. some i mean that's that's less often now now that we have stores all over the place right but in right. the early days we would do that yeah um but it is that's a great story too yeah. if you're telling somebody like you know don't worry about it in fact we come out to you because yeah. it just never happens exactly yeah but the dealers are not crazy about electric cars and the introduction of electric cars, in part because they don't break. 
You know, I don't know the answer to that. I think uh, uh, Tesla's cars don't break. I'm not convinced that. Well, they could probably make them so that they'll break. break. Yeah. Well, see, like the Chevy Volt and, and the uh, the Prius and so forth, they are basically gasoline cars. They just have a electric engine in them as uh, electric motor in them as well. Mm -hmm. So you have actually twice the maintenance on those cars. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah, so you don't really have. I right. mean, Tesla's you, really you still have an engine. In you have, it, yeah. in fact, whatever you have with the engine, you have the same problem plus the minor maintenance on right. an electric one. So what what is nice for Americans about the Volt though, or the concept yeah. of the Volt? Is that going to happen? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that is that um, the range extension? Yeah, I mean, I think cognitively that's, we worry about. Yeah. Running. There's out no of question. Uh, unlimited range is phenomenal, and yeah. Tesla working on, on ways to solve that problem with sedan. Um, I can't talk about it, but you can't uh, talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but rest assured, within a few years, it won't be a problem for us. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Um, and so, do you feel at this point, I mean it's difficult to say, at this point do you feel like you're going to create a market and at some, at some point GM and the other guys are going to come in and say thank you, we really enjoy this and there'll be no business left for you, they're just going to undercut what you're doing? We always worry about competition but at the end of the day, build a great product that people want, you're fine. Yeah. So. Hard to, hard to know. We just focus on it. Yeah. I mean, you've gotten a longer, you've gotten more lead time than I necessarily would have thought you. I thought, right? Isn't it amazing? It's yeah. Ta it's, it's, and it's, it's taken them so long to even wrap their head around the, the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But they've been dealing with their own stuff, so there's other reasons. Yeah, there's been stuff on their minds. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, can't, yeah. I can't remember any There was specifics, some but... sort of billion dollar bail. Yeah, I don't remember either. Um, but yeah, it's great It's great for you, I think, that, yeah. that they're giving you that kind of head start. Um, Moving a little bit into you know, like what's what's next, and and uh, maybe we'll come back and talk about one ride a little bit too. Sure. But but uh, but I want to touch on the fact that you took some time off and you went to culinary school, right? Which I think is an amazing um, use of your time. You were already interested in cooking, and and uh, it took you a year and a half, correct? Yeah. Year and a half to become an actual chef. Where did um, you go? Uh, the New York French Culinary Institute. Oh. Which, tell that story. Because yeah, so that, that, that's, that's a funny story. So, so I, I, I'd been, I sold my first company and I had some time. And uh, my wife wanted me out of the house, I think, because I was getting really antsy. And so uh, she, she, she reminded me that there was a cooking school around the corner. And I went down, around, down there to say, okay, I'll sign up for some cooking classes. I didn't realize it's one of the top schools in the country or probably in the world. They looked at me like I was crazy. Because they don't offer cooking classes, it's a it's a full on. Yeah, one you described it as basically like walking up to Harvard and saying, "Yeah, yeah. I'd love to take some night classes." Or, exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and they looked at me like I was crazy, and, and it turned out I needed to get my high school transcripts and write essays on why I could why I should be in here and <laughs> relate to someone else. This was crazy for me. Yeah. But I but I wanted to go, and, and, and as soon as it was a challenge, I was like, "Now I'm definitely going to go to this thing." And so I, they wouldn't let me into the real uh, school, but they let me into the recreational version. Did that for a few months and loved it. And, I was and like, the oh, recreational no. version was three months full time. Yeah, like three months full time. That's yeah, recreational. That's exactly. their play version. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so then um, uh, I said I want to go into the, the career one and finish the year and a half. And they agreed. And they transferred me over. And I, when I got in there, I realized that it's, it's like full metal jacket. I mean, they literally scream at you for six hours a day. They break you down into a blubbering ma the yeah. mess. Yeah. The uh, the course was a year Did and you a half. cry? I would admit it on the show, but uh, <laughs> there were times when I uh, I was close to breaking down. I'll be honest. I mean, yeah. there, eighteen people started, six people graduated, and no one no one failed. They all quit. Yeah. And w w just literally a week before graduation, there was this big tattooed guy with big earrings who made it all the way through, walked out in tears. I would never cry. Graduated. I would cry. That amount of yelling would make me. You know, the thing is, it's a joke though, because towards towards the end, I'm sit, I'm in the class, and this, this, the the chef comes up to me, pushes me aside, and says, "Give me your carrots." He chops them up in like blinding speed, and <laughs> give me your carrots. Give me your carrots. And, uh, <laughs> and I, and I step line. aside, and he does it all, and then he pushes me back in front of my station, and then he walks over to someone on the uh, on the other side and screams at them and says. Even Kimball can do his carrots in this time. You are so pathetic. You can't. You can't even get it done. Right. And you kind of realize this whole thing's a joke. Yeah. This whole thing is just a way to break you down. Right. Right. Of course, the guy's just 
broke down. So, I mean, I don't agree with that, that approach, but it was an amazing experience to get through, and at the end of it, I, I, I could cook pretty well. Right, and you, and you, you explained that, that a lot, or, or, or at least much of cooking in a professional kitchen is about an amazing amount of discipline, yeah. and that's what they're trying to ingrain. So it is very much like the military. You don't have a lot of space, you've got to know what you're doing, Otherwise, you get hurt, other people get hurt, things happen, and, you know, food doesn't come out. Yeah. Yeah. He was describing the basic training. Well, it is it's very it's much like that training. crap. It's very yeah. much like That's the Army. That's what it is. Yeah, except that the ar- in the Army, it eventually ends. This is a year and a half, and it just is pegged. Well, I didn't, I didn't carry over my career. Well, an officer training is different than yeah. boot camp. This is like a year and a half of boot camp in a kitchen. And you've got large guys with tattoos with giant knives and cleavers. I wouldn't really want to piss them off, yeah. you know? <laughs> And you know what, these ships, kitchen, these the ships are not big imposing people. There's some of them are small women. Yelling at you. Yelling at you. With tattoos. With, you know, they may or may not have tattoos, but they will, they will stare you down. And it doesn't matter how big you are or how many cleavers you have, you will back away. And when you went, in, when you went into the school, because this is sort of coming into some of your next passions. When you went into the school, you're passionate about cooking. Were you passionate about food and where it's coming from and Providence and some of the things that you've gotten passionate about with your own restaurant? You know, I think um, I've always been passionate about where food comes from in, in a general sense. But when I started the kitchen uh, with my wife and with Hugo, uh, you know, Hugo really brought this passion of the local farms. Um, I was much more passionate about what people ate. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a difference. Uh, and um, when we started working with the local farms, I really got an appreciation for what it meant to have real food, you know, grown, pulled out of the ground that day. Yeah. And, you know, we change our menu every day at 4 p.m. We write it based on whatever we got deliveries on, you know, yeah. and it's great. It's, it's, a, it's a very exciting restaurant to work in. Right. Um, and that's but, what the, I mean, the kitchen is famous for that. that that's, that's what we do, exactly. Yeah. And so I think what we've done over, over the past few years, though, that I've gotten more and more excited about is working with local schools and just supporting, uh, or probably supporting is the wrong word, just uh, trying to help change the culture of food with our kids. Right. Because they, they think in terms of processed food, a slice of pizza, chicken nugget. And what I want to be a part of is, is getting them to think about food in terms of, you know, what, what can we grow and what, where does it come from and, and tasting food properly, uh, understanding that green isn't bad. You know, if you, it's amazing. If you, if you put basil on someone's pizza, on a kid's pizza, they'll... they'll, they'll you know, scream at you because they don't want anything green on their pizza. Mm-hmm. If you grow basil in the garden, oh, yeah. they'll literally um, pull it off and eat it. Right. And right. so it's a completely different mindset that, that you can get into a child's mind that I think if you do, you do it young enough, you can do. And so we, we do, we're, we've been doing that for about six years, and, and that's something I want to start getting more involved in. Let's loop back really quickly to One Riot. Sure. Um, because I think that One Riot's interesting, but then your transition's interesting, because I think you may be having a, a midlife crisis. Do you have a, do you drive a Tesla? I do. So you may yeah. be having just <laughs> the right. very kind of midlife crisis that, that we're focused on the show. That's right. Yeah. Is it on time? No, no, it's oh. unfortunately not. The, um, at One Riot, what was the, what, what's been the mission there? So, okay. yeah, so One Riot basically, for a lot of the Twitter users out there, what we do is we watch what people are sharing and talking about. And if they're talking about Tesla Motors and they might be talking about the IPO or something along those lines or a video of the latest Model S, we'll actually collect that together and you'll be able to search for it. So if you just search for Tesla Motors, you'd find out right now what are people sharing the most and talking about the most around Tesla Motors. It's, huge, it's a huge phenomenon. The real-time web is growing like crazy. Uh, and it's been a really big success for us. And that's different than Google in just yeah. So Google people. will give you more of a historical view of the right. of the web. You know, if you did a type into Tesla Motors, they'd send you to TeslaMotors.com. Mm-hmm. What we'll do is we'll send you the the, the latest video on the Model S. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a different uh, approach to to search. And then we also do on the advertising side for the same thing. We'll actually help. We'll create ads that are based on what people are talking about. So the iPad is sold we'll find out these are the top products on Amazon that people are talking about and we'll push that out there. So that's kind of the business. Similar to Google, the search and then the ads we type together, but more on a real-time basis. And, the, and, and if you're watching the show live right now, you're kind of participating in this move towards real-time yep. web, which has been fascinating to watch. You know, it was this library, basically. Yeah. And now it's becoming, at least for a lot of people, very important to, to, uh, to, to not be looking at the library version of the discussion, but being, you know, what is yeah, the, what's, what going, is, on what's right going on now? right now? Exactly right. Yeah. Now, um, is how, how, how close to now 
are the search results or something? Uh, like within that. seconds. Within seconds. Yes. So, so if this show was posted and it's about I mean, Kimball... Yeah, you search for it right now. You should, this should, this show, this should be at the top. God, the, knock the, on wood that that, that happens. Yeah, it right? depends on who, if they're talking about it. Let's hope yeah. you guys are talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if there's some tweets going out there, so if you search Kimball Musk right now, this show will come up as yeah. a result. God, I hope that happens. <laughs> um, let us know if that's happening or not. Um, so, so, uh, mm, someone has tweeted. I guess we got to go back to Tesla really quick. Can you can you talk? Uh, Andrew Clark wants to know if you can talk about the partnership with Toyota. I didn't know there was a partnership with sure. Toyota. That's a very exciting partnership. Yeah. Um, so uh, Toyota, uh, it's interesting. You know, we always viewed in the early days Toyota was really our competitor because they're the ones that have been the most forward thinking on, on electric cars and. With the, the, the company we have the most success, most uh, uh, respect for, mm -hmm. um, and you know, several months ago they came to us and uh, uh, with a, an amazing opportunity f uh, for us to buy the Numi plant from them. We were in the process of deciding where to do a, a, a car factory, mm -hmm. and uh, they love. They it turns out they actually love what we're doing, mm -hmm. and they want uh, they want to they want to be part of the Tesla. Uh, this is in California. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Yeah. New was this the, the one that was uh, co-owned with? It was co-owned with GM, and they yeah. closed it. So this was yeah. huge. This Not is only great. big news for the yeah, community. Yeah, big news for the community. Thousands of jobs come back. That's amazing. Yeah, really, really great. And for Tesla, you know, a partnership with Toyota, which is the biggest car company in the world right now, it's, you know, it's incredible. Really cool. Yeah. Really cool. I had no idea. Thanks for that question. Um, so. You're, you're on the board of all these amazing companies. We haven't even talked about Space uh, X, space, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, the guys like electric cars, space travel, a restaurant. It's it's annoying, honestly. It's <laughs> annoying, but forget that. So, so you're doing all this stuff, and then you are in the mountains with with your son, and something happens. Yeah. So six months ago, I broke my neck. So I. Uh... I was, I'm an avid snowboarder, went down uh, Jackson Hole Mountain, the three feet of powder, through the trees, almost killing myself, decided, you know, tomorrow, let's take it easy, let's go snow tubing with the kids. And I get up on the snow tube run, and my four-year-old is next to me, and I'm here, here, and go down at the first run, get to the bottom, tube flips, land on my head, break my neck. Uh, paralyzed. Paralyzed on the left, uh, two weeks of dealing with this stuff and then uh, uh, got spinal fusion I was horizontal for two months and you know, it, it changes your perspective I mean I, yeah. I was very lucky I mean basically the way it works when you break your neck is you, you, you can break it at quite a few different angles and I broke I broke it right down the center and so I didn't get any twisting and if I'd gotten twisting I'd be I'd be paralyzed in some form right now yeah. so I'm very very lucky and so uh, that gives you a very, very different perspective on, on life, you know. So, yeah. you know, I've been part of, been very fortunate to be part of a lot of these businesses. And I consider myself fortunate, I, 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 lucky, not fortunate, maybe lucky is the wrong word, but just fortunate to be around people that, that uh, have done great businesses that want to be involved, you know. Mm -hmm. um, with, there's with, a certain, I, I appreciate that. Like, there's a certain amount of luck in life that yeah. some people think they're so brilliant that they're not lucky. You know, my friend uses this term "hit by the lucky." Yeah, I think that's fair. You know, like, well, you swear that there's, 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 there's something to not trying too hard. And I don't mean that that you shouldn't yeah. work your ass off. You have to work your ass off, but but um, don't take life so seriously. Mm -hmm. you know, just just if someone's doing something that you think is cool, just help them out. Yeah, I mean that's what I do. I mean one of the things I reason why I'm involved in so many companies is it's pretty much an open door for me. If someone wants to come tell me about their business, come on in. Yeah, and I'll tell you what I think, and uh, I probably won't get involved. But that gives me amazing opportunities. Right. And but you, so you, so you had this moment, and it's one of those moments where priorities just do, 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 yeah. do, right. I mean, yeah, you're laying totally. there, and you're laying there, and, and you know, for me, this uh, this what happened was I, I I've been working on on with the kitchen and the food side and the and the school food stuff for a while, and it's always been on the back burner, and. Um, when I hurt myself, I was like, why, of all the things I could be doing in my life, why is that on the back burner? That's, mm -hmm. In fact, when I hurt myself, it was so much on the front burner, almost nothing else mattered. It's amazing. And I think, you know, it was, a friend of mine was talking about uh, somebody who, who was going to have an operation and there was a good chance that they might not survive the operation. And, and in those moments, the priorities are yep. situated in such a way that if you can hold on to that and bring it into the rest of your life, it's going to be very powerful. Yeah. 
And that's, you know... I think holding on to it is... is, That's the difficult thing, maybe, right? I think it's it's difficult. I think I'm in a unique position where I literally have no excuse. Right. I'm financially fine. Right. I have all the contacts in the world that I need to go do this. Yeah. I have the time to do it. I have people around me who want to do it. I mean, I have no excuse at all. I I love that way of putting it because, you know, people um, see me making a life shift and, and they're like, well, you're rich, you know, and that's true. And, and, I, and so, in very much the same way, I have no excuse. Yeah, excuse. Now, there were times when I was not rich that I was able to, you know, put my passions and my, and my work together and my yeah. values together. And it, was, and it was difficult for different reasons. But now, yeah. I'd be an idiot. Exactly. Not to, exactly. you know. Yet, the world's full of idiots yeah. that <laughs> decide that, no, I think that I just need a little more money still. Yeah. You know? Um, well, I mean, also, I'm not a believer in non-profits. I, the, what I would do would be a for-profit enterprise. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I do believe in, my, my, my concept is market-driven socialism, right? If you can't support it through good old capitalism, then whatever socialist activity you do is going to die out. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to support itself. And when you say socialist, you're not, I mean, some people hear socialism and they think one thing. Yeah, you're well, I mean, by socialism is care about your community. Society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good for society, exactly. Yeah. Do something that, that, Obviously, it makes money because if you don't make money, you can't support yourself. And it doesn't survive. It doesn't survive. Yeah. And you're not setting an example. I mean, well, this is uh, so the kitchen is a restaurant in Boulder. It's, we work with the local farmers, the local schools where uh, everything is uh, 100% recycled. We don't have any garbage. We, have, uh, we use wind power for our energy. I mean, it's like all the way to the nth degree, the, everything we could possibly do to be a, a yeah. great member of the community. Yeah. If we didn't make money, it would be a complete waste of time because we're not setting an example for anyone else. I think we're probably one of the most profitable restaurants in town. I, I would imagine. And yeah. that's because we do and, a great job, you know, yeah, and people yeah. love our product. But we also connect ourselves to the community, and I think that comes back to us. People know that. I mean, it's, we don't market it that way, but people know that. It's hard right. not, to, not to know that. Right. And so you, you, your, your values shift, you decide, man, this thing that I didn't really realize was that important to me has moved up to number one. And now you've said it on web TV. I know, it's, it's the first you time I've I mean? it. Inter- so. It's interesting, though. Yeah. Now you've said it. I mean, and hopefully that sets it for you more. Yeah. Um, where... Uh, well, I really don't have an excuse. <laughs> and, you have, and you have no excuse. And it, is, and it is where you realize you had the most passion. Or, the, you know, we talked about this. Like, you know, one way to identify passion, someone suggested to me, is what are you most angry about? Yeah. And the state of food is something that hmm. you are somewhat... Unbelievably angry about it. Yeah. Yeah. So you've decided you're going to take what was, I don't know, six on the list. You've moved it to number one. And now you're just going to use your curiosity to figure out, well, where's, you know, where yeah, is the capitalism in this? Well, this is, the, this is the terrifying part, right? I mean, if you really do, are passionate about something, you don't want it to fail. Right. And I've been part of businesses that have failed as well. So I want to make sure and take the time to understand what I'm doing so that even if we hit the hard times that you always do. You you know why you're why you're here, mm-hmm. right? You're, and I think that's that's probably more the the time. That, I mean, it's not going to be that long. I'm probably six months maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, really set myself up to to do this. I mean, it's a never ending problem. You know? so you do it. Imagine in my lifetime we could do this in the whole across the United States, which would be a stretch. Mm-hmm. There's the rest of the world. You know? And when you say this, yeah, what we're trying to do is, yeah. is is at a very high level is have an impact on the food culture in the US. So to change the way kids think about food, that is a hard thing to do. And it's interesting be, be, um, for a lot of reasons. One, because it's just generally interesting, but for another, if you watch the show with Ann Cooper, Ann Cooper yeah, Ann's great. is like right in the middle of it, changing school lunches in Boulder as done, as done Northern California, yep. um, Berkeley. Um, but we talked about the fact that she pretty much runs against Everybody yeah, and everything. It's so sad. I mean, I, I think what Anne does is amazing, and yet yeah. even the parents don't support her. Right. The parents are pissed off. The kids are sometimes the kids don't, revolting. I mean, yeah, exactly. The the uh, the supply again, and she's saying no chocolate milk. Or the, you know, the government is too busy or too. Yeah. I mean, she needs all the support she can get because what she's doing, she's she's fighting the system. Yeah. And what we want to do is a little different. She's tough enough. She's tough that enough. I don't and worry is, about. Yeah. yeah, exactly. She's gonna yeah. be good. Yeah, yeah. She'll, she'll she'll get it done. But what you're doing, which I which it, from, with my background is probably more of the judo that I would would think right. to use exactly. is how do you 
uh, culturally adjust all those forces that she's going straight up against exactly. and move their energy to, to actually change change school lunches, change our, our, our yeah, young change people's diet. Yeah, change the attitude towards yeah. food. You know, I think yeah. the, uh, the kitchen has done this. I mean, I, I don't want to be immodest, but what the kitchen has done is we, we are a restaurant that has educated Boulder on what is possible. Mm -hmm. Prices aren't that expensive, but you can eat food from the local farms. You can support your community. You can... Uh, it, it is, is a, it's a hub for the for meeting people that you see all the time around town, and that's what we mean by adjusting the food culture. Uh, and and it didn't do it in a way where there was never anything preachy. It was much more just cool. Like what what does this menu mean? And they're saying that this just came in today, and here's yeah right, and yeah. here's the farm. Like it's just sexy. Yeah, you know right? it it's uh, it's just honest. Yeah, it's like, you know it's really what we're doing. It's we, a little bit of we've transparency. Never, we've, I guess. we've never uh, we've never tried. You know, we've, 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 we've felt like we've come close to crossing the line to make it look like marketing speak a few times. Mm -hmm. And whenever that happens, we have to pull back. Because Fucking marketers. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, so we've, we really have to be careful to not cross that line. But at the end of the day, we're doing something good for the community. So we get a lot of slack as well. Yeah. Have you ever eaten at the kitchen? Uh, I never heard of the kitchen. Mm. We'll yeah. have to go. We'll have to fix that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, what about we get special prices. It's a penny off yes, for right, us, exactly. you know, on everything on the menu. So. <laughs> Do you promote it a lot? Uh, no, never. Not at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently not. Never talk about it. Um, it promotes itself because it yeah. is a very unique culture, right? Yeah, and so that, that's where we're coming from is to try and take that same attitude and try and well, what can we do with schools? And we do support a, a foundation called yeah, the Grow Foundation, to get into that. Yeah. which is great. So the Grow Foundation is a phenomenal uh, organization that's actually started by some of the folks at the kitchen that okay. still work at the kitchen, and they do this on the side. And what they do is they go into the schools and they they take our curriculum and they mm -hmm. teach the kindergartners, first graders, uh, edu they educate them on what real food is. Mm -hmm. The second and third graders tend to the organic garden. And the fourth and fifth graders learn how to cook, and they cook for the other students mm -hmm. for the for the rest of the school. And that has been a phenomenally successful program. Got to be amazing. Amazing to watch. You know? Amazing. And that, that's what I mean by uh, as a good example of, of going in and adjusting the food culture, mm -hmm. getting kids excited about it, rather than saying you have to eat this vegetable, or that you have to memorize the names of yeah. them, or memorize the elements that are in a carrot, or you know any of that stuff kind of makes food a drag. Yeah, totally right. But the minute you're actually participating in the creation, mm -hmm. that learning is sort of like what you're doing. It's very much like what you're doing in the restaurant. That learning is just organic. It's organic. Or it that's happens, sort of a bad yeah, pun actually, almost. Exactly. Yeah, it happens naturally. It happens naturally. Um, and I've seen it with my own kids. It's, it, you know, you talked about what happens with you put something green on a pizza. Yeah. If you put it on... Sorry. Yeah, right. right. You're, you're out. You're close. And, and it's and it, you know, but the stuff that they're pulling out of the garden, or that they've you know done at the garden mm -hmm. at school, totally different attitude. And then even one step further, and you do it in your program where kids cook. Yeah. They will eat pretty much no, pretty anything, anything they cook. Exactly. It is. It's nuts. Like this is the secret that parents need to know. Like, you know, and it's okay. The kids will bring home the secret, I guess. Well, you know, I think that the problem with parents today, and I, and <laughs> I, I mean parents, it in the nicest possible with way, parents today. is they work, they work too hard. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for them, the idea of coming home and cooking a meal for their kids after working a 10-hour you know, day yeah. is a really tough problem for them to solve. And I don't know the answer to that. I, honestly don't I will know. suggest an answer. Because I think, I think the time that you spend cooking with your kids and cooking for your family... Mm -hmm. It's time that you don't spend in doctor's offices. Yeah. So, and it's actually bonding time. It was. I mean, it's great time. I mean, if, so, but if you like sitting in the doctor's office with, you know, colds and infections and allergies and stuff like that, and you find that great bonding time, then go that route. Yeah. You know, cook out of boxes or, you know, make, right. buy stuff. But if you don't, I think, it's, I think there's an absolute time swap between the time you spend together in the kitchen and where you spend it in other places. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's right. Um, so no time is really wasted. It's kind of like workouts, right? Yeah. If you go have a workout, did you really take time away from you know what you could be putting no, into work? Some of my best ideas have been Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And also, you, you're thinking better later. Yeah. Um, so you optimize yourself and you save time. But that's a hard thing to do. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to say that it's an it's easy, it's I mean, an it's, easy it's, shift. 
to me. Yeah, it's a tough, and especially in the American work culture, it's it's uh, which I love. And yeah. That's part of the reason why our businesses are so successful is we work really hard. And um, I think though there's a priority that's missing when it Can comes you get that? to. Uh, is it <laughs> We're gonna call coming in. We're supposed to tweet in the questions. <laughs> Don't just call us. We have to get our number anyway. Yeah, so I think it's, a, it's just priorities. You know, I think the uh, the that same parent will spend an hour watching TV with their kids. For sure. You know, so don't do that. Spend an hour cooking food with them. The TV could even be on. Oh, there you go. Know. Yeah. That's popular. All right, it's a call-in show now. <laughs> yeah. Just call us at. I'm not even going to give away the number. That would be crazy. Um, but yeah, it is. It is about. It is about uh, the time shift. But it's all cultural. Behavior is cultural. cultural. Exactly. So you might know that it would be better to cook. You might know that you could spend the time that you're watching TV doing something else. But when the whole rest of the world is spending time a certain way, you don't have the cultural pressures yeah. on you to actually change. It's behavior. the opposite, actually. You're, you're culturally pressured to take your kids to McDonald's. It really, you really are pressured to do yeah. all the same things that everybody's doing. And I've experienced cultural pressure. I've tried to, you know. I've tried to use cultural pressure, and I've also experienced it uh, myself. Yeah. Moving to Boulder was obviously an experience with cultural pressure, right? Yeah. I pulled up. Yeah, you pulled up. Okay, I right. had a Viper. I had a Viper-powered truck, you know, right. and, I, and I had it on the street, and it's like, okay, this. I didn't even have to talk to anyone. You could just feel it. It's like <laughs> you can't park that here. The right? daggers flying yeah. away. Yeah. You could just you, you could just feel it. And then the other very funny moment was when my my neighbor um, looked at my yard. And I, I don't think I'd even watered it. I just moved in. And she's like, wow, your grass is really green. And I said, yeah, it is pretty green. She's like, I never have the heart to water that much. <laughs> and, and, and you're like, oh, I was, <laughs> I was set up. Right? Um, but my, you know, now my yard is sufficiently brown. It's older, right. brownish green. You know? right. you got the, and and that's, you know, that's, how, that's how we behave. A little cultural pressure goes a long way. Yeah. And, and designing things, I, I applaud the school thing, and I'd like to see, yeah. you know, how, you know, is that is that become a national thing? Where is the foundation now? Is it is it Boulder? It's just Boulder, only? and they're doing really well. They're uh, uh, hoping to expand. Well, they're currently in twelve schools, mm -hmm. and there's some potential for the district to actually make it district wide. Okay, uh, which will be more of a challenge than, a, than an opportunity because they're just it's a nonprofit organization. Too. It, is it is it possible though that somebody out there would say, okay, I love that program and I want to get involved? Could I call? The folks yeah, just over to, there? you just tweet me at at Kimball K I M B A L. And, and is there a I'll, foundation I'll web, website as well? Yeah, Grow Foundation, Grow with an E G R O E Foundation dot org. Is Grow a name of a person? Or? No, no, it's just oh. 